Bhutan has clung to its traditions and ancient culture. In most households, the same image of four animals is painted on the wall. At the base of the pyramid is an elephant. The monks of Bhutan call this the story of the four friends. It is said a bird dropped a seed, a hare dug a hole, and a monkey planted the seed. Then the elephant sheltered the plant until it grew into a tree and allowed each of the animals to climb onto its back to enjoy the fruit. Although 2,000 years old, it seemed to me this simple image expressed as perfect an idea of conservation as I could imagine. Each and every species of this world is uh, correlated. So for our survival, mm. we have to give protection to these species. Yeah. It may be a creeper, it may be tree, it may be uh, birds, it may be uh, big animals, small animals, anything. But for our existence in this world. Leaving Bhutan behind us, we headed south, back into India, and passed through the last remaining Toto village. Only 36 families of this tribal community exist today. As animists, the Totos worship nature, and like the elephant, depend entirely on the forests for their livelihood. Here, the modern world had yet to arrive. As the forest petered out, the countryside became monotonous and arid. Little irrigated fields crisscrossed by narrow footpaths and rough roads leading to endless small villages. Despite their extreme poverty, people would still come out with food and oranges paying their respects to Ganesh. Oranges from Oranges. Bhutan. That's why she's getting excited. He smells them. Huh? Huh? Thousands of. Thousands huh? of oranges. I mean, how can they resist? The truckload of oranges were destined for a weekly market. And as we arrived, I felt a distinct air of hostility. Kanchan had picked it up too and began to vibrate violently beneath me, a sure sign of an elephant's unease. In these rural meeting places, gossip is rife. As I bought oranges, I heard a rumor that a woman had been killed by an elephant. The story became more and more bizarre. Not only had the woman been dismembered, she'd also been eaten. India is a land of extremes. I found it extraordinary that in a matter of a few miles, the attitude towards the elephant had changed so dramatically. One minute a god, the next a ghoulish killer.
That's the secret cow? Oh, yes, you get down. Uh, ask the cow a question. Babati, what, what do I have to do? Ask a question. Any question. Can go. To the cow? Yeah. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Wish come true. Ah, it's good. Thank you. Okay. Cow got me in the head. You know what I asked it? What? I'm not telling you. <laughs> Just tell me, tell me. No, no, no. Tell me. No. Tell me. We'd arrived at the border of Jaldaipara, one of the two national parks in West Bengal. Here we could at least be shown undisturbed elephant habitat and one of the only two remaining populations of the Indian rhinoceros. At the last count, there were 34 rhinos surviving in the park. That was until today. We learnt that poachers had just killed a calf for about two and a half inches of its fabled horn. When you are in the jungle, your eyes, nose should be sharp. Rhino, rhino down. Oh, oh no. What? <laughs> There's a stamp. A stamp? Yeah. Oh, it's moving. Yeah. No, no, not moving. Ah, I see. Your eyes are so bad. Oh. You're not fit for the jungle. Okay. Ah, it's <laughs> training. Are rhinoceros very shy animals? Rhino. Are they shy? You know? They're stupid animals. They're stupid? <laughs> Why? No way. To some extent. Yeah. And blunt also. Rhino with calf is dangerous. Otherwise, the rhino is a very nice animal. Actually, human beings are the most unpredictable of animals. Oof. Of course. Because a human, human being is the cause of Nothing. all trouble. No, no, no. Rhino is there. Yes. But this they like. This is like yes. the grass they particularly like. Yes. Did your father in, in, in the old days did he used to catch in this area? Yes. Yep. We catch elephant in Madari Hat also. Strict conservation laws now prohibit the shooting of any wild animal in India. But in the past, the forests of West Bengal provided some of the best big game hunting in the world. The shooting of animals, which now stand on the brink of extinction, is difficult to understand. But then it was a different world. Game seemed abundant. It was simply part of tradition and the lives of the landed and ruling classes. Today, many of India's most knowledgeable and ardent conservationists were previously shikaris or hunters. But shooting elephants as a sport was never part of Indian tradition. In fact, elephants were the ideal partner, providing a steady, safe and high vantage point to pursue the quarry. Some elephants were even trained to hold their breath to ensure a clean shot. In the 16th century, under the Mughals, elephants were protected by pain of death. Much earlier in the 3rd century BC, the Emperor Ashoka issued India's first known conservation law, forbidding the slaughter of certain animals, including elephants. By contrast, under British rule, a bounty was placed on elephants, even as late as 1870. In Sri Lanka, formerly Ceylon, in the late 19th century, three British officers gained great notoriety as elephant hunters and achieved the dubious distinction of eliminating 3,000 elephants between them. Perhaps it was divine retribution that one of them, a certain Captain Rogers, was killed by a bolt of lightning. 
Since then, his grave has been struck again. Although ivory poaching is a continuing threat, the Asian elephant, unlike the African species, doesn't suffer to the same extent. The reason lies in one important genetic difference. In Africa, both sexes have tusks, whereas in Asia, only certain males carry ivory. Here at Jaldaipara, as with many other national parks in India, it was wonderful to see that the traditional partnership between man and elephant was alive and well. Throughout Asia, elephants have always been held in high esteem. Ancient texts still survive addressing every aspect of their character, care and management. One scripture recommends that a vehicle for a king is an elephant in whom these parts are elevated, the two temporal bosses, the withers and the backbone. Good is an elephant whose body is smooth and swarthy, colored dark like a sword, whilst ruddy with a sheen of gleaming spots in the shape of a conch and the lotus, whose buttocks stand out like breasts, whose collar part is broad, very fleshy and elevated. Such an elephant is worthy of a king. This one. Second one. Second elephant. You know why? Why? Because I like the eyes. Mm -hmm. and, and I've got a feeling that when I walked down, mm -hmm. it was the only one that winked at me. <laughs> now, if you were selecting an elephant here, what elephant would you select? I would select the third one. The third one? Yes. This one here? Yes. Why? See his he her head, eyes. And the legs in legs. good condition. Legs in good condition. Eyes in good condition. Good, uh -huh. strong trunk. Uh -huh. Thin trunk is not so strong as big. Um, but he, thick. Th she's got a nice big strong trunk. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The ideal elephant should have five toenails on the front foot yeah. and four on the back. Uh, total is eighteen. Uh -huh. See, see her skin, ears, forehead. Best elephant in this table. Although Parvati respected the wisdom of ancient elephant law, in the end her knowledge was based on personal experience and gut instinct. And if there was one thing she had learned, it was never to tease an elephant. No, don't do that. They can turn very quickly. Yeah. You can't imagine. I had so much to learn. Throughout our journey, we were constantly joined by throngs of people. Even here in India, where it is not an uncommon sight, people never tire of looking at this animal. The elephant has a certain indefinable grace, a mesmerizing, almost magical quality. Ancient Sanskrit texts even advised women to emulate its walk because it was considered so sensual. There is no better way to see India than by elephant. You come across everything with an element of surprise. It breaks down all social and cultural barriers. You are accepted and welcomed wherever you go. Even as a foreigner, you do not intrude. Life simply carries on as you slowly pass it by.
We were about to enter the forest where 15 years earlier, Parbati, then just a teenager, caught her elephant, Lucky Mala. What made you choose her? Well, this small one, easy to tackle, and, yeah. uh, and the shape also very nice. Nice shape, yeah, she's a nice shape. And very playful. Yeah. And uh, very uh, crazy. Very crazy. Yeah. She hasn't lost that, has she? No. no. Huh? In the east, elephants have been captured by man for at least 4,000 years. Different techniques have evolved, and the methods vary from one area to another. The most primitive was pitfall, a simple hole skillfully camouflaged with leaves and sticks on an established elephant track. Another was to doctor food with opium. A subtler method was enticement. A tame female on heat was used to lure bull elephants into a pen. To capture large numbers of elephants, the kedah was used. Entire herds were driven through a funnel-shaped entrance into a sturdy wooden stockade. Once inside, a selection was made, and these elephants were then noosed and led away for training. East India, the method of capture practiced by Parbati and her father was Mela Shikar, which literally means hunt from on top. Carrying heavy lassos, elephant catchers mounted on kunkis, fast and fearless elephants, especially trained for this technique, would ride in like cowboys, cut out an animal from the rest of the herd, noose it, and rapidly secure it to their own elephant. It was a highly skilled and daring operation, calling for great expertise and courage. In India, traditional capture was banned in 1981. Now the capture and management of elephants has been replaced by modern and scientific methods, such as chemical immobilization, darting with drugs. But indigenous skills like Mela Shikar should be kept alive, for they're a vital part of elephant law and now rest in the hands of a few people like Parbati and Pandika. To lose this wealth of knowledge would be a tragedy, not only in cultural terms, but in the everyday practicalities of elephant conservation. Increasingly, solutions to the present dilemma are being found in the traditions of the past, and Parvati's skills and experience are now being called on more and more. By using her own elephants to monitor and drive out the wild herds which threaten inhabited areas, Parvati helps reduce the inevitable death and destruction. I'll show you. Hold here, one, and here, not here. Yeah? OK, here, in the middle. Right. And throw like this. It's very difficult with the wild one, you know? Yeah, 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 I'm sure it's a game. Good. When I got lucky, uh, her mother came to fight with me. Oh, no, you pull like this, this side. Well, I am pulling this side. Oh, you are not at all Look. pulling my side. Your Which side. side am I pulling? Ah, ah, this is the way. Have you seen? Ah. Wait. And then he ties it. See? <laughs> Not the uh, smaller one? Ah. See? Ah, see? Hold on. Ah, In his like lifetime, this. Lalji Barawa, Parvati's father, yeah. caught over a thousand elephants. Elephants have always been part of the pageantry of India. Symbols of power, military might, and social status. For sheer magnificence, nothing can ever compare with the spectacle of the endless lines of these bejeweled titans, draped in shimmering silks, parading in the durbars and ceremonies of those once grand and golden days. Many of Parbati's father's finest elephants came here to the palace of his friend, the Maharaja of Kuch Bihar. As a small child, do you remember coming here? Yes. Yeah? In 1965, I came here. Yeah? 
I remember those days, <laughs> my young days. Your young days, <laughs> when you were a little kid. A little kid. Yeah. But I saw. And this place yeah. must have been so big to you. Yes. You know, it must, as a child, it must have been enormous, huh? We have seen uh, best time, really best time. Full uh, uh, sentry guard, everybody in a new uniform. It must have been a beautiful palace once. Actually, it still, it still has something. Yes. At one time, there were over 100 elephants in the Royal Pilkana, or elephant stable. The jungle has taken it over, has it not? Yes. Taken his own course. Mm. Parakeets, pigeons and bats. A huge building, huh? Yes. Lovely elephant, huh? Yes. Beautiful. Mm. Lovely tusker. Mm, lovely. Huh? I see the tusk. Beautiful. And the forehead. See the forehead also? Yeah. No, oh, here is, this must be the family motto. Mm. Yeah. Jato so. dharmas tato jayo. Where there is religion, there is victory. Where there is religion, there is victory. Unlike the sad and empty palace at Kuch Bihar, Parvati's ancestral home in the neighboring state of Goripur was alive with memories. The house was a treasure trove, amassed from a life spent in the company of elephants. A shrine, proudly and lovingly preserved, in honor of Parvati's late father, Lalji Barawa, Prince of Goripur. It was as though he had never left. This is my father's study room, Mark. How beautiful this is. My father? and my uh, stepmother, mm -hmm. my father, okay. my guru. Your guru, then you're my guru. So guru is guru. It goes on. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. gone on. It's wonderful. And this is Pratap Singh, yes? Yes, Pratap Singh. A leopard flying into the air. <laughs> yes. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, you're tiny there. <laughs> First thing you saw was an elephant, yeah? Yes. Oh, you're tiny. tiny, tiny. Beautiful elephant. Now your father mm -hmm. on Pratap Singh, yeah? Yes. Lovely shape. Lovely tusks. Uh, huh? Lovely tusks. Beautiful. The tusks is beautiful. And this is the stockade, the yeah? The stockade, inside the stockade, white yeah. elephant. And again, again here in the again, stockade? Yeah, in the stockade. In the stockade, yeah? Okay. Oh, my God, it must have been exciting. Wonderful. <laughs> it's exciting. Leopard. On the jeep. The leopard on the jeep. This is Kuzir Palace. Those days. Ah, look at those days. My God, it's different now, isn't oh, it? Yeah. Quite different. And there you are again. Again. <laughs> again, <laughs> smiling. smiling. The Kuzbihar Palace, look. Kuzbihar yeah. Palace. Beautiful. In our camp. What? Papa this... is here, we are here. These are, the, these are the Manashikar camps? Yes. Yeah, I am with Pratap Shing. the graveyard of Pratap Singh, my father's favorite elephant. How old was he? Young, young animal. Really? Of uh, nearly 30, 35. And your father was heartbroken? Heartbroken. A whole family. Mm. They can't say no talk, no sing, no play, nothing else. No sound, no food. This is my family temple. Mark, we are nearing the end of the journey. And it is time for go to the temple, the great temple. The next day, Parvati took me to the great temple of Kamakia in Gauhati, the capital of Assam. Kamakia is one of the most important and powerful shrines in India. As a non-Hindu, I was forbidden entry so Parvati made prayers and offerings on my behalf. 
but this has always been a place of paramount importance for all elephant people. No Mahout can feel fulfilled until he's received the blessings of the Mother Goddess. I waited for Parvati outside the temple, which, perched on a hill, overlooks the mighty Brahmaputra, a river that begins its life as a tiny frozen stream, high in the eastern Himalayas, in Tibet at Mount Kailash, the abode of the gods, and finally ends its journey 1,700 miles later, as wide as a sea in the Bay of Bengal. Oops, it's beautiful. This bangle you should keep whole life. Okay. Thank you. Let us go. If my travels in India had taught me anything, it was to go with the flow. If you try and make things happen, they don't. Everything has to run its course. Ice cold beer, my God. Ice cold glistening bottle of black label. Mal! For you, chill beer. Champagne, very yeah. merry. Yeah, this thing. go on, yeah, go on, me. talk to me. Please. For me, yeah. for me, uh, uh, orange juice. Orange juice, uh, mangoes, yeah. papaya. <laughs> it smells wonderful, isn't it? Mm, this yeah. uh, elephant apple. Huh? Like people who have travelled together and shared the hardships and difficulties of life on the road, an easy familiarity now existed between us all. Before, Parvati had been cautious, almost reticent, but she was now happy to share her knowledge and the secrets of her profession. Lewis. medicinal plant here. Yeah. This one, for elephant and man too. And for man, mm. for what? Oh, for stomach, no. for pain. For pain? For pain. So do you crush them. it up? No, you have to dry it first. Dry it? And then, and, uh, then. So I couldn't eat it like that? No, no, no. no, no, no. Okay. 